The reason this slide is up right now is to explain my long and arduous journey to before I actually stumbled upon something that has absolutely enchanted me and I've gone down the rabbit hole. I have uh, worked in the fields of economics, laws and law as a lawyer, as an economist. I studied physics um, all around the world and have finally then went and got myself this professional certificate in Bitcoin technology. And since then, I've not looked back. In the last two years, through this process of discovery, I have traveled the world and I have met with and worked with parliamentarians, regulators, policymakers, economists, sat at prime minister offices. Why? All trying to uh, frame policies and draft legislations that will allow innovation and growth in the space of blockchain technology. What is blockchain technology? We've all been hearing about it in the news. There's so much buzz around it. There is such a hype around blockchain technology. What is it all about? After all the study and all the interactions, you know what? Blockchain technology is nothing else but a story of human collaboration. Blockchain technology is about traveling back to the future into a world where people used to directly trade with each other, talk to each other, and do commerce with each other, but only this time armed with decentralized P2P technologies. What does this mean? This means that we get to do away with the monopolistic and the very powerful digital avatars of early day village squares, coffee houses, and marketplaces, also known as Amazon, Facebook, and NASDAQ. Almost all our interactions today are nothing else but ledger entries in an accounting book. Since ancient times, a ledger and accounting has been at the heart of commerce, and double entry accounting invented 400 years ago is still in use today. And in modern times, the only change that has occurred or the only innovation in this space of database accounting has only just been to go from paper to computer bytes. That's all that computerization has actually gotten to us. As an example, our money is nothing else but a balance in an accounting ledger at a bank. Our identity today in the digital world is nothing else but ledger entries in databases that are controlled by private organizations. And so is all our internet searches, are all just controlled and owned by large corporations, and in the, in the case of the internet, mostly under the US. And what does this mean? What has this translated into? So what if all our everyday interactions are controlled by centralized databases through powerful intermediaries? What is, what is this translated into? Well, this is translated into a world where Uber's market cap is $60 billion. What do they do? They are, they are managing the buying and selling of a car ride. What does YouTube do? What, what are YouTube's profits? Three and a half billion dollars. Why? And how much does the content creator on YouTube earn? All of them together earn 5% of YouTube's revenues and profits. A company like Amazon made $34 billion by charging commissions and fees to independent sellers. What is this? This is a murmuration. Murmuration is an example of complex group decision making in the absence of hierarchy. Let me say that again. A murmuration, these are just uh, birds is an example of complex group decision making in the absence of hierarchy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what blockchain technology is about. It is transforming the centuries old method of database management that was invented by the merchants of Venice in the 1400s and 1500s into a completely new way of accounting where trust is established through mass collaboration and algorithms. In this way, digital ledgers are co-created and are maintained by everybody on the network. 
So everybody on Facebook's network is co-creating and maintaining that database. And this is all possible because of open source decentralized protocols like Bitcoin and Ethereum that are owned by nobody. So there is no shareholders. So if Uber's valuation is $60 billion in market cap, instead of all that wealth sitting in the hands of the shareholders, it's distributed between the users and the riders of the Uber app. That is the world of decentralized applications or dApps which are built and can be built and are being built on the blockchain network. It, blockchain is nothing but a global decentralized ledger. Just imagine a spreadsheet, a global spreadsheet, a copy of which is distributed to everyone. And that copy is actually being updated and synced in real time to everybody else's copy. And in this way, we don't have to rely on a central party who's owning and controlling that database. And when there is no middleman, then what happens? When we don't have a centralized owner and controller of a database that is intermediating our everyday transactions, then what happens? Well, as we all may have heard in the news, in Venezuela, families are starving because hyperinflation has hit the one million mark. Through blockchain technology, I can send a dollar and a half to a starving family in Venezuela. That is not possible if I go through the intermediaries and the middlemen uh, of today's system, also otherwise known as banks, SWIFT, Western Union, Visa card, MasterCard. If I cut out all these intermediaries, I am able to send a dollar and a half to halfway across the world. This also means that I do not need PayPal's permission if I want to send money to Edward Snowden. And the value of this technology has also been realized by United Nations World Food Program, who has been helping Syrian refugees in Jordan without banks and without any intermediaries, without any NGOs, all through smart contracts, which are self-executing computer programs on the blockchain that can enable a Syrian refugee through the scan of his iris get food. That's all that's needed and this is the power of decentralized uh, technologies. And in this grand vision of the world that we are now heading towards, which is basically just rewriting the story of human collaboration and going back to the early days, I see myself and my role as an educator and enabler in building block by block a more egalitarian and decentralized society. Thank you.